Hey everyone, uh, in this video I wanted to go over something that usually you don't see a lot in CCIE content, but that is static routing. Um, as we all know, static routing is really not that complicated, it's just a matter of, you know, making sure they're pointing in the right direction and making sure you don't have loops, um, etc. You know, maybe using some IP SLA to do failover. But what I wanted to do in this lab was show what it would be like if you used static routing for your provider to customer connection. Um, probably something you wouldn't do in the real world, but you know, just in case you're on the CCIE lab and then you get prompted with, hey, do some static routing here, at least you can quickly see the steps to do. Um, again, not that many steps, so this should be a quick video, but just kind of want to go over some of my reasoning for it. So. I'm gonna bring up the equipment and what we're gonna do is actually focus on customer red up here. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna have router eight peering with router one and then router six peering with router four. And essentially they're just gonna have static routes to each other. So router eight is going to be pointing to six, 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 six. And then router eight will be pointing to 8888. So we'll, we'll focus on router eight configuration right now, um, which again will not be very complicated. It will just be a IP route for the six slash 32. And my next hop is gonna be router one, which is 10181. All right, not again, nothing crazy here. This is like CCNA, CCNT stuff but kind of T on this side, we're going to do a route towards eight, two, five, five, two, five, five. And here it is 10, four, six, four. All right. So now that our customers are configured, now let's go over to router one, which is our PE over here. And we need to do two things. Um, the first thing we need to do is actually get a static route pointing back to the customer. And what we're basically going to do here is create this route pointing to the customer and then advertise it over to this PE. All right. So there's going to be no advertising between the PE and the customer, but basically you're, you know, again, you're doing static routing. So you're telling R6, if I want to go to eight point to four, four needs to know how to get to eight and router one is that PE. So, the key here is that the routes need to be VRF aware. So we come in and we do an IP route, but we use the VRF red and 8888, 255, 255, 255, 255. And it's going to be 10, 1, 8, 8 is going to be my next hop. Now we need to make sure that these routes are propagated to the other PEs. And the way we do that is with our BGP. So it's router BGP 100. And let me actually do a show run here to show you what I actually have configured already in BGP. Um, Cause this, the MPLS network is already set up. So really all I have is I'm doing no BGP default for IPv4 unicast. I have this neighbor 4444, which is the other PE, and it's update source loopback zero, and it's active in the VPN v4 address family, and we're sending communities. So not much configured besides the basic, you know, VPN v4 PE to PE routing. So all we do now is we go into the address family for IPv4 VRF red, and we just do a redistribute, uh, redistribute static command. And that is it. So now, if we head over to router four, um, let's do a show BGP VPN V4, um, unicast all. And I could see now I'm getting this 8888 route slash 32 because it was being read, you know, we're doing redistribution on R1. So again, R4 doesn't actually, you know, send this route to the customer. What R4 needs to do is IP route VRF red for six. It's a slash 32 route. 
and it's going to be 10, 4, 6, 6. And again, router BGP100, go under the address family for the VRF of the customer. Um, address family IPv4, sorry, IPv4, VRF red. And redistribute static. Okay. So now, if we go to one of the customers, let's go to R8. We have that route for 6666. So let's try to ping it. And we will source it from our loopback, which is 8888. And it works. So really not complicated. I don't need to spend you know five more minutes explaining this to you guys. But the only real key here is that on the PE routers, just remember that the, the static routes need to be VRF aware. And then all you're doing is you're actually redistributing them into BGP so that they can be sent from PE to PE. So quick little video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And next time we'll do something a little bit more, you know, routing protocol centric, but still important and something you want to make sure you're not caught off guard by static routing on the CCIE lab because you will be kicking yourself. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.